Hi, my name is Shannon Kringen. You're watching Goddess Kring, and I want to make a video about the way I see the connection between being artistic and being high functioning autistic. I think there's an overlap between being artistic and autistic. And Temple Grandin, who wrote this book, The Autistic Brain, is somebody that I admire and I resonate with on certain levels when she speaks. I identify in some ways with what she says about what it's like to be autistic. She has a, B, a PhD in animal behavioral science, I think it's called, as well as she's pretty much an expert on expressing what it is like to be autistic and she has very good ideas on how to help educate people and get the best out of basically helping autistic people reach their full potential whatever that may be the part i resonate with is the high functioning autistic people that she speaks she herself is a very high functioning autistic person there's a movie about her life starring Claire Danes called Temple Grandin. I recommend that you check that out. It's a fascinating movie. I've seen it three or four times. Fascinating. So I will say that I am a visual artist mostly. I also write poetry and do music and this is the cover of my mobile phone that I custom designed myself, self-portraits, photos, abs totally abstract uh, design painting that I did that I had printed onto a mobile phone device. And this is my tattoo that I designed myself that means be yourself no matter what they say. So let me just say one thing. I have synesthesia, which means that I hear when I hear music, I see shapes dance in my head. And Temple Grandin talks about how Einstein would probably be classified as autistic these days because he didn't even speak until he was over age three. He was kind of a poor student, and yet he was obviously extremely gifted in a certain way. So not all autistic people are gifted, but let me just say that the connection, the overlap that I, I don't think I'm autistic. There's times when I wonder if I'm autistic, but doctors and therapists that I've talked to said they do not think that I am autistic. I know one thing I am is highly sensitive. And so I know that a lot of artistic people and autistic people are both highly sensitive. So it could be that the main way in which artistic and autistic overlap is in being highly sensitive, meaning that you're extremely sensitive to sound or vision or, or touch. A lot of autistic people get overwhelmed and freaked out by visual or auditory or touch or various sensual things, the different five senses. Artistic people are very much usually very sensitive, and, and it's a double-edged sword. If you're sensitive, it means you get easily overwhelmed, or you get really affected by things that other people might not even notice, or might not stress them out at all. They might say, oh, that's a loud sound, but they're not going to freak out. Whereas a highly sensitive person or an autistic person, an artistic or an autistic person might be overwhelmed by a certain sound or odor or visual uh, cue. Let me just say that the main also, okay, so I think there's a connection between being artistic and being autistic or there's overlap. There's overlapping pros and cons. Like, in other words, it's kind of like there's compensation. There's the law of compensation. In other words, a deaf person can sometimes see extra well. They can't hear, but they can see. Or vice versa. Somebody can you can hear but you can't see and so you're better at one than the other vice versa whatever so never mind I'm a little bit dyslexic so forgive me but Temple Grandin talks about how when you educate somebody when somebody is autistic and they can't tie their shoe and yet they're really good at math or they're really good at music or they're really good at something focus on that focus on whatever the person's gift is if they have a gift try to figure out what it is and help them build the gift. 
And I feel the same way about being an artistic person. Thank God I was raised by an artistic mother and an artistic father. Both my parents are sensitive and artistic minded, thankfully, and they saw that in me. My mom was smart enough to take me out of public school and put me in alternative school because I was teased and picked on in public school and they did not emphasize the arts or individualized learning. Temple Grandin talks about how some autistic people uh, that people sort of give up on are actually have more potential. They actually have more potential than we realize, but they learn in a different way. So Temple herself is lucky because her own mother had, get, had a private tutor for her and really helped stimulate her and was sensitive to her problems and sort of pushed her like sort of, you know, push, you know, somebody that is troubled needs to kind of be pushed, but then you have to be gentle with them and you kind of challenge them and see what they can do and yet pull back when they're overwhelmed. So Temple Grandin's main point, I think one of her main points that I like or that I agree with is if somebody is really sensitive and they have certain challenges, a lot of times they have gifts. So it's like a, compens a law of compensation. Maybe that's the way nature works. You know, like if somebody's really good at one thing, maybe they're really bad at something else. And she says, Temple Grandin says that, that autistic minds tend to be specialist minds, meaning uh, somebody that is really, really good with computers, maybe they have horrible social skills or they're, they're not able to do a lot of things, but they're really good at computer stuff but not much else. So I identify with that. I feel like my social skills are not so hot. I'm very shy. I'm kind of introverted. And yet I like to be on stage. I could be naked in front of people, modeling, performing. I could do spoken word. I could do this video that I'm doing right now. And yet take me to a dinner party and I'll be very uncomfortable. It's too loud for me. I get overstimulated. I don't feel comfortable socially chit-chatting with people. Everyone's talking at once. I can't stand it. I have to get out of there. I once took an acting class. I love acting classes, but this one exercise this, this guy had us do, this improv guy had us do, was everybody was talking at once. And the whole point of it was everyone talk really loud all at once. It was like a cacophony of noise, and we were all supposed to like be able to concentrate on what we were saying and tune out everything else or something, and it totally freaked me out. I had to leave the room, and I was the only one in the class that ran out of the room. I almost felt like, oh my God, something bad's going to happen. I'm going to die, or I felt really freaked out. And when they, when they take a blood sample, I sometimes faint. I like freak out. Okay. So I have a certain sensitivity where I freak out under certain circumstances. And yet I am brave enough to travel to countries I've never been and stay with people I've never met. I am comfortable doing improvisational monologues, being a nude model. And yet I am so afraid, you know, it took me till I was into my forties to get a driver's license, things like that. Like I have these phobias. And yet I'm really, really gifted in other ways. And so I think being highly sensitive and artistic is similar to being a highly sensitive autistic pe person. And I feel like some people think of autism as an illness or a deformity. And maybe it is, I don't know. But it could also just be a different kind of brain. You know, Temple likes to talk about Autistic people have different brain. Like if you scan someone's brain, one part will be bigger, one part will be smaller. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. And you know, like well, like I'm left-handed. Now my grandmother was left-handed, and she was smacked for being left-handed. And they tried to turn her into a right-handed person, and, and she was stubborn. And she's like, I'm left-handed no matter what. And she stayed left-handed her whole life. Bless her. Rest in peace, Grandma. Bless you for that. I am left-handed and thankfully I grew up, I was born in 1968. Nobody ever told me that I couldn't be left-handed. Okay, so I am kind of like, um, I have synesthesia, I'm left-handed, I'm an only child, I'm highly sensitive, and yet I'm really good at certain things. So I, I don't know. My main point is that I see an overlap in artistic and autistic. And I'm not talking about, actually I am. You know what? Another similarity is my artwork. I do a lot of pure abstract expressionistic painting 
as well as photography. I see things and autistic people can sometimes see things that other people don't see that are actually there like patterns and I do that in my art. I see patterns when I look at water or chrome or reflections in a window I will see patterns and I don't understand how everybody doesn't see the pattern like I will take a photograph of a pattern and a reflection I see of myself or a building reflected in chrome and people will go I never noticed that and it's like how could you not notice that and yet I could walk down the street and not notice something really obvious that everyone notices oh didn't you see the sign it said you know right there there's the restroom and I I'm like where's the restroom I can't find the restroom and there's a sign right there saying there's the restroom so it's like I didn't notice that that's like too obvious for me and yet I'll notice the texture of something or you know it's like I'm hypersensitive to the texture or the smell or the color or the reflection of something that other people don't see. Now artistic people and autistic people seem to have that trait. So it's, it's interesting. It's like obvious things are hard for me to do and yet I can do these obscure things. Now I'm not saying that I'm a genius. I'm not trying to be arrogant and say oh, I'm so special. I'm just saying that I see a similarity in autism and being artistic. But maybe it is just being sensitive being hypersensitive to some things and then oblivious to other things. Maybe it's the law of compensation. You're oblivious to like there's the restroom sign and yet you're completely sensitive to the texture of something or just the the little tiny thing that you notice that everyone else doesn't notice. So the obscure things you notice or when I hear music I see shapes and there's never a time when I hear music and I don't see shapes. So, and I've heard musicians talk about they can look at a painting and they can hear sound. Or if I hear music that's Mexican, I can almost smell Mexican food. Like Indian music makes me think of Indian food and I can almost smell the Indian food and want to eat the curry. And when I, when I see anything from a certain culture, I think about the music and the art and the food of that culture. And it's hard for me to not do that. There's nothing wrong with doing that, but I just automatically do it, and I guess not everybody does. So my brain likes to put things into certain categories in a certain way. So I think that's interesting, and I wish more people would explore this idea that artistic and autistic is related. And Temple Grandin talks about how uh, Van Gogh, Van Gogh's painting Starry Night, who I recently just got to see in New York City at the MoMA Museum of Modern Art. I got to, to see Starry Night by Van Gogh up close and personal. Beautiful. I took a self-portrait of myself in front of it. Beautiful painting. Made me cry. Temple Grandin talks about how the patterns in both Van Gogh's Starry Night as well as, uh, what's his face, um, the drippy paint guy. Oh my God, I can't think of his name. Oh my God, the guy that, Jackson Pollock. That there's a pattern, that there's a scientific pattern. You think it's just random paint, you know, painting, abstract, art. And there's a pattern and proportions that are like the golden proportion that match scientific patterns of science. Fascinating. So it's almost like intuitively these artists were in touch with nature and science in a certain way. Whether they knew it or not, they were intuitively painting. And yet the proportion is perfectly, it perfectly matches scientific data of, of air patterns and wind patterns or natural phenomena that, that is a mathematical pattern. And I also see the connection between music and math and patterns. And yet I have a hard time like going to a dinner party. I don't want to do that. I'm terrified of that. I can't handle it. I don't like it. I don't enjoy it. And yet I like to go on stage and read my poetry or perform or ride in the world naked bike ride. And I see patterns in music and math and art and science. And I see beyond the duality of thinking you have to either believe in science or God. To me, spirituality and science are one, not separate. I'm not religious, but I'm very spiritual. And so to me, nature and spirit and science and spirit are the same. Quantum physics and all that jazz. So thank you for listening. My name is Shannon Kringen. You're watching Goddess Kring. Please write me with questions or comments. Go to shannonkringen.com to find my email. And I highly recommend, if you're interested in anything I'm saying, 
anything, videos or books by Temple Grandin are very interesting. She's very inspiring to me. I really like her brain and glad she's doing her thing. She's a very unique visionary person and she's helped animals as well with her work. Look that up. So thank you Temple Grandin for all the work that you do. And I got to see her live actually. I got to see Temple Grandin live at um, Microsoft. A friend of mine works at Microsoft and I got to see her live at Microsoft and I'm so grateful for that. Fascinating person. I took photos, a couple photos of her which I put on my Flickr. So thank you. I'm Shannon Kringen, ShannonKringen.com. Write with questions or comments. Thank you for listening. Once again, I got carried away, and this video is longer than I wanted it to be. There it is. Namaste.